Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about the HPE ProLiant DL380P Gen 8 server. In this video, we're gonna specifically focus on drives, both hard drives and solid state drives. So let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL380P Gen 8 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in now. This video will be specifically dedicated towards drives, both hard drives and solid state drives. We figured it'd be a time for a good refresh on an old popular system to let you know what is actually compatible nowadays. So what we're gonna do in this video as a whole, we're gonna go over the different types of compatible interfaces. We're gonna go over the max speeds and the max sizes, including what is is off spec and not on HPE spec sheet. And we're going to show you how to install them, which is super easy because it's a hot plugin. And then at the end, we're going to show you a cool tool we like called HD Sentinel. So let's go ahead and hop into the good stuff. All right, so what drives are compatible with your ProLiant Gen 8 server? Well, you're going to have SATA hard drives, SAS hard drives, SATA solid state drives, and SAS solid state drives. Those are going to be the four types of compatible drives. No, unfortunately, uh, NVMe is not going to work. You cannot pop an NVMe uh, into the backplane, and there is no uh, converter kit or adapter or something to make it work. Uh, so NVMe is not going to work um, on the backplane. So those are going to be your four choices. So what speeds do you get with those choices? So for a SATA hard drive, you get 7.2K RPM. That's what you're going to get with a SAS hard drive. It's going to be a little bit faster. You can get 7.2K, 10K, or up to 15K. Now, I will note, especially since this is an older system, that a used 15K SAS drive, you got to think it's going around 15,000 times a minute. The ball bearings are going to wear out over time. So I would keep a spare in stock because they are known and prevalent to fail. All right, what about a SATA solid state drive? Well, with a SATA solid state drive, you can get six gigabit per second. And with a SAS solid state drive, you can get 12 gigabit per second. So that's going to be the real advantage of a SAS solid state drive is it's going to be faster overall. And all right, so now we know a little bit more about the speeds. Let's talk about the sizes. The sizes really depend on what type of chassis you have, okay? So if you have a small form factor or a 2.5 inch chassis, the drives are gonna look like this. If you have a 3.5 inch or large form factor, the drives are going to look like this. So with the small form factor chassis for a SATA hard drive, uh, HPE spec sheets show two terabytes. That's the most we've put in. I wouldn't be surprised if someone drops a comment down below and says, hey, we've put in four, we put in something higher. With SAS hard drives, uh, HPE spec sheet's gonna show 1.8, we've put in 2.4, and again, I wouldn't be surprised if someone uh, drops comment below and says that they've put in something higher. Um, now, when you go to uh, the large form factors, that's where it gets a little bit different. Both so, uh, show six terabytes for SATA or SAS hard drives on HP spec sheet. We've put in 20 terabytes for both, and I wouldn't be surprised if someone's dropped in 22. Um, so those are, uh, again, older information on the spec sheet, and that was one of the reasons we wanted to do this video, even though this is an older system, to let people know that, yes, you can go off spec from the spec sheet, and you can put in larger drives overall. All right, so what about the solid state drives? For a SATA solid state drive, HPE spec sheet only shows 1.6 terabytes. That's definitely not accurate. I mean, maybe back in the day it was, uh, but right now you can put in a 7.68 terabyte and it's gonna show for SAS only two terabytes for a SAS solid state drive. We've put in 15.3. So yes, you can definitely go much, much higher overall. And again, NVMe isn't compatible. All right, so now we know a little bit more about the different compatible types, the speeds, the size, Let's go ahead and show you how to physically install them, which is super easy because they're hot plug-in. And then at the end, we'll show you how to test. All right, now that I have my ESD gear on, we're safe to work on our DL380P Gen 8. So first things first, we're just gonna remove our old drives. We're just gonna do the top two since uh, that's the easiest right now. So we'll just go ahead and show you it's an old 300 gig 10K SAS. Great drive back in the day, uh, but a little bit obsolete and definitely want to increase their performance on our Gen 8 and extend the life best thing we can do is install a new SSD. So that's what we have here. And you will notice that we have the correct bracket. So when you order from our site, you will get the correct tray that you need. So it's really easy to install them. You literally are just going to slide this in. And when it gets to the end, click it into place. Very, very easy install. One of the quickest installations and one of the best things you can do as far as a band-aid to extend the life of your machine. The other thing I wanted to note, if you're running with a large form factor chassis and you go to our site, we do have the option to get the 3.5 inch tray with the bracket here that are the converter, the adapter, 
because all the SSDs are going to be 2.5 inch. So this is a tray that you're going to want to get to uh, order in order to use it and have everything set up to go. So again, we'll have the entire kit all ready to go so you don't have to run around all over, all over town. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about how to install them, let's show you how to test it with a cool tool that we like called HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now. And as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome Awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours which is great especially when you're buying used equipment you can see how long that that drive has been in use you don't want to be using drives that have been you know heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool but as you can see we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software like I said lots of information it'll give you health scores of the drives as you can see the two we have up top they have a hundred percent health score while the one at the bottom has a 99 percent so all pretty good so i hope you guys found this video useful and if you did go ahead smash the subscribe and leave a like if you're interested in purchasing a custom built server or you're looking to buy some drives we do have plenty of those in stock so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloud ninjas.com sales at cloud ninjas.com Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.